In the world of strategy games, two settings have enjoyed an enduring popularity. The futuristic science fiction setting has played host to a number of legendary series, including Starcraft, Total Annihilation, and of course, Homeworld. On the other hand, the real-world historical setting of the Middle Ages or Medieval period has been a frequent source of inspiration. Age of Empires, Crusader Kings, and some of the early Total War games have used this setting to great effect. Some of the reasons why developers keep returning to these settings are quite obvious, but others are a bit more surprising, and this decision can have a dramatic effect on the underlying gameplay. Join me as I explore this in a bit more detail. It's probably worth, first of all, understanding what exactly the Middle Ages means. When you said to me Middle Ages or Medieval period, which are interchangeable terms, I always thought of a very specific period in time. I thought of castles, sieges, knights on horseback. But actually, it's a much larger period in history. It's generally accepted that the Middle Ages began with the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD and continued all the way through to the fall of Constantinople in 1453 AD, so almost a thousand years. When it comes to the sci-fi or futuristic spacefaring setting, it's more loosely defined, but essentially we're referring to anything which is set in the future and will typically involve space travel and maybe technology which is far advanced compared to what we have now. Now as interesting as this may be, I think the, the main question is what does it mean for us gamers and the games that are produced? Perhaps the most immediately obvious contrast is visually. When it comes to the Middle Ages, the visuals are all very comfortable and recognisable. We have knights, we have horses, catapults, castles, and it's all set in a real world location. We have grass, we have rivers, we have seas, and then we have natural resources, which we understand as well. So we have trees for wood, we have stone, gold, fishing, and wild animals. With the sci-fi setting, the developers have a much more difficult task on their hands, because all of those things need to be reimagined for the future or for a new scenario. They won't be recognisable. So the resources in the game, the units, the characters, the setting itself, these could all be brand new creations, and obviously that affords a great amount of freedom, but it's also a real challenge to create something which is actually compelling, that people care about. So when it comes to the sort of visual accessibility of these games, obviously the Middle Ages are a clear winner. And I think another factor is also the idea of progression. So in some games such as Age of Empires, you advance your civilization through various ages, such as up to the Castle Age, and as you progress, your buildings change, everything looks more advanced, it looks upgraded. Whereas in sci-fi, when everything is set in the future, everything's already high technology, spaceships and the like, it's quite hard to make a distinctive visual improvement as you advance. I think uh, characters, characters and story are another key distinction here. And obviously, when you're working with a real historical period such as medieval Middle Ages, then you have real characters with real backstories and you have real historical battles and campaigns, you know, wars, which you can bring to life in your game. Now, I think this is obviously a huge advantage for these Middle Ages games because you've got, you've got interest already in the story. Even before you've created a good story, people are interested in certain historical battles. They, they want to recreate them, they want to play as whoever it may be, you know, maybe it's the, the Scottish against the English. <laughs> Recreate Braveheart or something, even though it's not quite historically accurate. But the point is, there's real world interest in this already. So you kind of half, half the battles already won. The same goes for the characters, because when you're representing real life characters, or real life uh, factions, civilizations, people already have familiarity with these. There's a level of interest, a, a level of knowledge. It just makes it so much easier for people to sort of embrace what you're presenting in your game, in your campaign, in your single player scenarios. People are just primed for it. So when it comes to sci-fi, again, you're, you're unconstrained. You can go to any world, you can fight in space, you can have any manner of new alien creatures and technology and any kind of plot you would like, any story, any campaign. But 
yes, you're free, but at the same time, you lack that sort of foundation, that support of familiarity, of a story that people understand, people already resonate with. And I'm sure we can all think of examples of science fiction being done poorly in various medium, and it's difficult. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a chore to get through. But on the other hand, when it's done well, the fan base, the sort of audience appreciation that you can garner from creating a good sci-fi TV series or novel is absolutely rabid fan base. You know, you've got extremely loyal fans who are really, really interested in the world that you've created. And I think part of that is because it's almost, it's a bit more personal. It's, it's something that you've personally created and shared with the fans and it's their, it's their world as well. It's not some historical setting that everybody knows about. This is very much, this is your world. You've created this. The world of Starcraft, the world of Dune, the world of Star Wars, Star Trek. It's, you know, it's something unique. The Middle Ages historical setting is familiar, it's accessible. As a developer, it's somewhat safe because you, you'll be quite easy to, to represent that to the audience and have some level of interest. But it may also have a ceiling on it. You won't get that level of devotion, that incredible fan connection that you'd get if you create a brand new sci-fi universe. So it's clear that there's one key distinction here, and that is the fact that the medieval setting is based on real life historical people, places, battles and conflicts. Whereas the clues in the name, sci-fi, is a piece of fiction which attempts to imagine the future. So this creates two very distinct challenges for developers. Either they're trying to create a brand new universe and populate it with places, characters, storylines in the science fiction setting, or they're turning to historical events in the Middle Ages and they're trying to tell a story which has been told many times and make it compelling. They also may be judged on the historical accuracy of their titles. And for the more serious gamers amongst us, you'll be asking, Okay, but what about the gameplay? Because that's what really matters at the end of the day. Now these setting choices can actually have a marked influence on the gameplay itself. Now if you think of the Middle Ages, for example, immediately you're limited. There's only a small selection of weaponry. There are no flying units because flight has not been invented. So in some ways it simplifies mechanics and limits it. And you won't see weapons of mass destruction and gigantic scale destruction because the strongest thing you'll probably see is a trebuchet. The result of the simplified Middle Ages setting in terms of units is that you tend to have longer battles that were more drawn out, fewer units and micro becomes more feasible in terms of things are not just getting obliterated in nanoseconds. So you can actually control your units, you can be a bit more strategic and for some you know, like Age of Empires 4, they think it's one of the best micro games around. Whereas maybe in a sci-fi setting with nuclear missiles and super strong ranged ordnance, units are just getting wiped off the face of the map and you can't really control them. So that's uh, pros and cons really. Now when it comes to these sci-fi games, there are no limits. The only limit is basically your imagination, what can be created. And there've been some incredible titles over the years with a huge diverse range of units, battlegrounds, weapons, everything, different visual identities. And if you take a game like Total Annihilation, you literally have upwards of a hundred units on each side in terms of different units you could produce. And as long as it's well done, it can be an absolute triumph. Now, when I say well done, I'm speaking of several things. I'm speaking of balance. Obviously, the more units you include, the harder it is to keep them all in balance. And then secondly, there's the idea of visual identity and making units feel unique and making people care about them. And if you have a hundred different units and they're all kind of nondescript, humanoid-like robots that walk around and do a go pew pew with a laser, then people are not going to really care. It's a hundred units, but they're all boring. So for my uh, hot take on the gameplay issue, I would say that the kind of Knights and Castles, Middle Ages games, they're more accessible and they do have some nuance and depth to them, but they are slightly limited by the setting. 
Whereas when it comes to sci-fi, it's just it's just boundless. You can do anything, and when it's done well, and it has been by StarCraft, Total Annihilation, Homeworld, then you've got something magic. Now one thing that I find quite an interesting case study is the fact that there are some strategy franchises which have done both. They've created an historical Middle Ages or similar title, and they've created a sci-fi title within the same universe of games. Now, taking my favourite game as an example, Total Annihilation, the initial base game was very much a sci-fi game. It was robots knocking lumps out of each other in the far future. But then they went on to release a sequel called Total Annihilation Kingdoms, which is very much castles, knights, trebuchets and the like. So we've got a direct comparison there. Gameplay very, very similar, but different setting. Other than the obvious contrast of moving to a fantasy medieval setting, one of the real big differences was an increased emphasis on the single player campaign and the storytelling within Kingdoms, which again relates to what I was saying before about the ease of storytelling when you have familiar settings, characters, everything like that. And they also slowed down the gameplay and simplified some of the mechanics. And the end result was the game was not as well received by fans or critics as the original. It was deemed to have been dumbed down and the gameplay was a bit sluggish, a bit simplistic. Which is kind of what you may expect when you limit the scope of the units and the mechanics within the game. I also thought of an example within the four times game genre. So we had the legendary franchise of Civilization, and the studio also made a spin-off called Alpha Centauri, which is set in the Alpha Centauri star system on a planet, a real world planet, but obviously humans are not quite been able to proliferate the stars at this point. So it's very much science fiction. Now, I absolutely love Alpha Centauri, and it was coming from a place of having so many disadvantages compared to Civ. It was not a real world setting, it didn't involve negotiations between real-life characters, real-life historical civilizations and leaders. It didn't involve real units, it didn't involve tanks and knights and archers and everything. It was all science fiction. So the audience had to fall in love with something that was completely new and was unfamiliar to them. Now, the developers did a fantastic job in making you care about the different faction leaders and the various secret projects and technologies. Everything was accompanied by a full motion video really showcasing what was going on and making you sort of feel life on this new planet. And also, gameplay wise, the shackles were off and lots of systems and technologies that maybe they wanted to prototype in the Civ series, they got their chance in Alpha Centauri, they got their chance to be used for the first time. And the result is just a much more in-depth experience, I think. I think it just plays better than Civ, and I'm not alone in that opinion. So maybe you're thinking you want to try some strategy games within these genres, and I have a few suggestions as to what I think are kind of the real the Mount Rushmore of sci-fi and Middle Ages RTS and strategy games. When it comes to sci-fi, I think there are a lot of choices here, but here are the sort of big ones for me at least. First of all, Command & Conquer, the Tiberian setting is always set sort of 20 years in the future. So when the original games came out in 1995, they were set in 2020, so future tech for the time. Then Tiberian Sun was set in 2030 and so on. So Command & Conquer, it's a classic. Beyond that, you obviously have to look at Total Annihilation and then its successors. So Supreme Commander, Planetary Annihilation, Beyond All Reason, just all those kind of games in this sort of uh, futuristic sandbox combat with epically large unit counts and real model projectiles and line of sight and everything and terrain terraforming. Of course we have to mention the most enduringly successful RTS game of all time and probably the most important esports title ever and that is StarCraft. You should definitely, if not play it, you should definitely look into watching some StarCraft matches because it's, it's, it's something else. And finally, really showcasing the unconstrained nature of sci-fi games relative to 
other fixed settings. You have Homeworld, space combat, just roam wherever you like, fully 3D, and we're expecting Homeworld 3 in the not too distant future. So that's definitely one to get up to speed with, so you can be ready for the hotly anticipated third title. In the Middle Ages, or medieval times, I would say the Holy Trinity are Age of Empires. That's just an absolute stone cold classic. Particularly some of the ones that have received remasters recently, so Age of Empires 2 as a remaster, or the brand new Age of Empires 4, well worth checking out. Next you have Crusader Kings, again, just, it's really just, uh, you think of the genre and that's the name that pops into your head, it's just, it's another classic. And then you've also had the, the period covered by some of the Total War games, so Total War has, has gone from everything from feudal Japan samurai fighting to Warhammer to future tech kind of idea, but the real sort of meat and potatoes has been historical battles. I think it's also worth mentioning that obviously I presented these two settings as kind of, you know, the big choice you can make for a strategy game, but there are some other really popular settings, some of which are kind of like offshoots of these two. And obviously, I focused on the real historical Middle Ages and medieval period, but immediately you can branch off into the wider fantasy setting and you can start introducing the idea of, you know, magic. So you think of Game of Thrones, you know, it's kind of it's kind of historical. You've got swords, you've got a certain level of technology, but then you've got dragons and you've got a bit of magic maybe. So a good example of that would be the Warcraft franchise. It's kind of historical, it's kind of real world weaponry and everything from a certain period in time, but then you've got magic and you've got different races and all kinds of stuff. So that's the first kind of offshoot I would say, and hugely popular as well, particularly with things like Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones becoming popular. Another really notable example of a setting which is very popular would be more modern warfare, so either sort of current or thinking about more recent historical campaigns such as World War II and maybe the First World War. So immediately you can think of examples such as the grand strategy game Hearts of Iron set in the Second World War. Now again, much like the Middle Ages, there's always a real world interest in these games. There will always be an audience. So I think in trying to draw some conclusions, one of my takeaways would be the idea that these real life historical settings, they are safe for developers. They can create a game and they will know that there is a ready built audience. There's history, real world history that people are always interested in. They always want to learn about human history and experience things through games and everything else. But at the same time, I do think there's some sort of ceiling there in the sense that by putting yourself in a certain real world setting, you are constraining your game in terms of the units, the gameplay mechanics, the sort of variety of settings and characters. You've put yourself into a period where you have to try and be somewhat historically accurate now. Whereas sci-fi is, is unlimited, it's unconstrained. Also, I feel that in terms of the sort of level of audience devotion that your title can garner, with sci-fi, you can, I think you can create much stronger bonds with the audience because, again, it's something much more unique to you and your audience, something new, a new universe. Whereas real, real life historical settings, they don't quite have the same sort of passionate fan base. And as a gamer, I think these settings tend to create two very distinct types of games. And I think just in just making this video, I've learned that I seem to have a very clear preference for the sci-fi setting. Every time there's been a sort of franchise which has forked in both directions and given me a choice, I've always favoured the sci-fi. So we have Total Annihilation, then we have Starcraft, which I favoured over Warcraft, which is more of a fantasy setting, and then we had Civilization versus Alpha Centauri, and I think Alpha Centauri is just a million times better than Civ. So. What do you think suits you? Do you like the, the simplistic but recognisable and familiar setting? Or do you like the unconstrained Wild West explosions and maybe a little bit rough around the edges of sci-fi? 
I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on sci-fi versus medieval in the comments below. Let me know what you like and why. And also, we have plenty of strategy games coming out in 2024 and beyond, covering these settings and many more. So if you're interested to see what's on the horizon, check out the video which I'm popping up on the screen now. Thanks for watching.